Well, hello, hello, dear Calm Business friends. Uh, we are here with another Calm Business conversation. Uh, just to give you a quick background, I am Kirsten Martin. I am a Squarespace and Calm Business educator. Calm Business um, as a movement started probably about two years ago when I was looking to create a awesome, awesome freebie lead magnet and uh, it turned out to be the Calm Business Review, which you know many of you might remember. Uh, it's a pretty <laughs> com uh, complex fifty-page document, you know, to review your business, uh, mostly at the end of the year, and um, and that really is what started um, this whole movement. You know, a lot of people uh, downloaded it, and they really resonated with the Calm Business concept. And what is calm business? You know, I'm still actually kind of defining it a little bit, but it started as a, you know, non-hassle uh, way of doing business. And literally, you know, I just want to be calm in my business. You know, that's really, you know, you can take that word quite literal. So I, when I make decisions, I often ask myself, does this feel calm? Or does it have the potential to feel calm? Because sometimes we have to go through the chaos to get to the calm. So, Today, uh, we are talking to someone that many of you probably know. Uh, we have the Paul Jarvis here. And um, now Paul has kind of, you know, uh, disappeared from the from the spotlight. And uh, but you're still actually very much active. And uh, and I really uh, appreciate you coming here today and uh, it will be great to just catch up because I'm sure a lot of people are actually curious about, you know, what are you up to these days? You know, I mean, some of you may remember, and that's how I met you first as well, through your Sunday uh, dispatches, a very, very popular newsletter. Uh, and you also had uh, MailChimp Essentials, you know, your course. Um, and um, I've, I, I took that as well back then. So, Let's just start by, you know, I mean, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I know you go a little bit way back, you know, like, how did it all start? How did you start your internet business? Yeah, so thanks for having me on, first of all, appreciate it. Um, I started my business in the 90s um, online, kind of, the internet was a very different place back then. I was just doing web design for the first probably 15 years and then I kind of branched out into courses and and books and stuff and now I'm focused entirely on software okay so you you know in 2019 wrote this book here company of one and I remember when you know like you know I'd already been aware of you of course and I really liked your general approach which actually always felt quite calm, to be honest, and uh, very like you were not a hustler or anything like that. And when you published this book, uh, I think it caused quite a stir, actually, in the online business world. And to me, you know, when I when I read it, it really was a, it was like a permission slip, a permission slip that actually, I don't have to grow a big company, I don't have to hire a big team. I could actually just stay a you know a one person business and um a what we nowadays call a solopreneur you know and uh, which is a term I didn't like back then I thought a solopreneur you know that I don't know doesn't roll off nicely off my german tongue but uh, hey <laughs> that is that is what we are and that is you know partly what this book is about tell us what prompted you to write this book um it's my newsletter I started sharing um, kind of the general idea that I that I write about in Company of One with my mailing list. They seem to like it. And I don't know, that kind of translated to, okay, well, I think there's more on this topic to dive into. Um, and then at the time I was talking to a literary agent anyways, and she was like, we could sell this idea um, to a publisher. I was like, sure, let's, let's try that. Because all my books before that had been self-published. Um, and this one was not, I went through a traditional publisher at a literary agent, all of that. And yeah, so I sold the idea and then I had to write the book <laughs> because they, <laughs> how they long, how long did that take you? Probably about six months, I think. Oh, to write that's the not book. bad. That's actually no, pretty good. I, I mean, I, yeah, I was also 
I was also still doing courses and other things. So it wasn't the only thing on my plate. So I kind of had to like fit it in, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it, it was pretty quick to write because I had been thinking about these ideas and the topics yeah. for a, quite a while. So it was just more finding research and examples to back up the ideas that I had. So it wasn't just like, here's the things that I think. It was more like, these are things backed by science and research and, and other great examples of businesses that, that kind of operate in the same, in the same way. Yeah. So, uh, and did you actually like reach back into your blog as well for this? I mean, oh, yeah. not, not blog or your newsletter rather. Yeah. Yeah. And for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every book that I've written, I would say a, a good chunk of it comes from ideas that I shared in the articles that I sent out to my newsletter yeah. over the years. So what are your other books that you've written? Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's another one? Uh, because good I, creative. Have, I have to admit this is actually the only one that I'm that I know yeah, but, that's fine uh, that's the one that most people know yeah. um everything I know I think has sold more copies um be awesome online business none of them yeah. are that I I mean I think that's probably the best but like that book kind of you don't need to read any of my other ones for that good creative was another one the yeah. company of one book is is the one that Yeah, if you've read that, you probably don't need to read any of the other ones. <laughs> well, I'm, I might still check them out, actually, you know, so um, because it is such an such an awesome book. So when you, um, you know, when you published that, um, what was the reaction in like, you know, in your audience and in the market? I mean, did you kind of feel at your end that it was causing a bit of a splash? Yeah, I mean, not with my audience because I think anybody that ha was reading my writing for any length of time before the book came out knew exactly what the book was going to be about knew exactly like yeah. it's it was not a shock to anybody that was aware of my writing I mean I think yeah there's probably there's a bunch of people that it didn't resonate with which is fine like I think I it would have been a crappy book if I'd written something something that yeah. everybody resonated with Like I would yeah. have said nothing in order to achieve <laughs> nobody being upset. I would have had to yeah. say nothing yeah. and have no opinion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Although I have to say, I mean, I sometimes, I don't know, every now and then you, you know, you read something or you come across something and you just think, well, this is so brilliant. How could anyone even, you know, take offense at it or whatever, you know? And, um, you know, and I think this is, this is definitely one of them you know but hey you know who am I you know I, I I just you know like I said you know it it really felt like a like a permission slip and um you know I mean in in your own you know you obviously you know so you had this hugely successful newsletter and you know you had a pretty you had actually you know successful courses you know MailChimp and and you had a few courses right mm -hmm, yeah and And then one day you decided to shut it all down. What was behind that decision? Um, I guess I realized that the, I think the, the type of business that you run, I think is it's important to consider or the type of business you want to run. I think it's important to consider what you actually want to do, right? Like I'm very introverted. I'm, don't get energy from being around or talking to other people. And in order to write books, you have to, I think I did like three or 400 interviews to promote that book. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It <laughs> was <so> ridiculous. <laughs> it was horrible. Like I hated my, I hated my life. And which is why I, I'm never writing another book because that aspect of it that you were, that is like, you need to, if you're going to write a book, you have to promote it. Right. Yeah. So I'd be doing a disservice if I wrote a book and didn't promote it. Yeah. So Same with the the newsletter, same with being on social media. All of those things require you to be, it, it, I guess it requires you to be the brand for your business and you to be out there and you to be like known to other people. And that was never something that I wanted. And I guess I I started to realize that more and more, the more that I did it and the more popular that I got, the more that that happened, the more I realized like, this isn't for me. It's definitely for other people. But for me as an individual, I didn't want that. So yeah, I didn't want to do it. And luckily, 
I guess the reason why I left that was because the software company that I had was making enough revenue where I could walk away from it. If that hadn't happened, I would have still been doing it and I would begrudgingly <laughs> be doing okay. it. Okay. Okay. So, Yeah. so in a way, so you had kind of your, um, your plan B or you had your, your backup plan and, and well, not even a plan, you know, but you had something else, you know, that could basically replace Yeah, I was actively it. trying to pursue something that Yeah. could get me away from it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, because I think sometimes, you know, obviously when people, you know, when, when you send out that notice, well, Hey, that's it. You know, I'm stopping to do this. You know, I think a lot of people were shocked and, Yeah. uh, you know, thinking, wow, okay. You know, and what do you do now? You know, and, and, and we often, you know, have this idea that, you know, an online business, well, you just start it and then it just is there and it makes you lots of money and all this, but it doesn't really you know work like that you know it takes time you know so you already had this other business you know and you had been growing that you know on the side and um and then it was there you know uh for you to go to you know when you decided you know that this wasn't for you now I think the I mean I get it about not wanting to always be in the limelight and all that you know now I you know I mean my audience isn't as big as yours and Partly that's by design, you know, because I think I would just feel completely overwhelmed, you know, if I had like millions of followers and all of that, you know, I, it might happen one day, who knows, you know, but I have no idea how I would deal with that. Um, and, you know, but at the same time, you know, I think there are many people who, uh, you know, we enjoy our online businesses, but, you know, social media can be overwhelming and this constant need to be on, which is also a lot of it is hustle culture. You know, so I think there are many of us who are looking for different ways of doing this, you know. So obviously, if you are the brand, then yes, you still have to show up, you know. But I feel there is more and more now um, a movement almost towards, well, we can still do it on our terms. So, you know, we do not have to follow those, you know, prescribed um you know, pass that so many people promote, you know, and, but at the same time, I think you're also a great example, you know, of, of saying, you know what, that really isn't me. I mean, I gave it my best shot and, you know, this is not how I want to spend, want to spend my life. And you actually have now built a really successful company, you know, which is Fathom. Um, and I use Fathom myself and, um, It's it's wonderful. I mean, it is so aligned again with the whole calm business uh, philosophy because part of my philosophy is that I want to run a business uh, that is also simple and streamlined. And, you know, and when it comes to analytics, uh, so Fathom, actually tell us a little bit more what Fathom is, you know, for the people who don't know. Sure. It's simple website analytics um, with a focus on digital privacy. What does that mean? Um, Google Analytics is horribly complicated and typically requires training and certifications or like a dedicated person to know how to use it. Fathom is a single page of information about your website. So who's on your website, what pages they visit, where they came from, uh, country browser, events, UTM, but it's all on a single page. People are always like, well, how do I get training for it? And my answer is always, there is no training for it. If you had to be trained to use it, then I haven't done my job because it's supposed to be so simple that it's intuitive. Yeah. And, But and, that's basically and how it. does, Yeah. and how does that tie in though, with also the privacy, you know, factor, you know, that actually you don't collect, you know, personal information to create those statistics. Yeah. So the statistics are, 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 are an aggregate, meaning they're not tied to individuals. Like Yeah. if you came to a website that had Fathom on it, we couldn't tie you to other websites you are visiting or like show you ads because you visited this site and this site and this site. It's we go to, it's actually a lot of work to anonymize and obfuscate personal information um, on the internet. And for, for something like Google analytics, um, we don't know what they do with that data. They don't charge us to use their software. So they're monetizing our data. 
and they make billions of dollars off of it. But we don't, I, I don't know what happens with it. They don't publish that information. Whereas we have a page on our website, I think it's usefathom.com slash data, where we say exactly what we do um, with the data, how we use it, how we store it, how we anonymize it. And we go through at like every little step along the process. Yeah. And I think people resonate with that where it's not just like, oh, if, I, if I'm not paying for the product, then I am the product. So maybe I should start paying for products where I just want to pay to use it, where the business model is more, I'm paying for software instead of I'm paying for software with my data or with my yeah. personal information. Exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, it's all about transparency as well. And I think that yeah. is what I what I really like, you know, is, I mean, it's it's hard enough, you know, especially for, you know, for for people who start an online business, you know, I mean, most people are not that technical, you know, and they don't really understand a lot of this stuff, you know, and, um, but also they don't like the idea, well, you know, exactly what are, what are they doing with my data, you know, and, so there aren't that many companies out there that actually are that transparent and that say, okay, we don't do that. You know, we do not uh, collect your private data um, because also we don't need it. You know, we don't need it for the information that that you want and that you need, you know, for analytics. Uh, absolutely. You know, I mean, Google Analytics, I, when I would go there, it was always like, oh, my God, I don't even know where to start. You know, and I'm I'm fairly technical, you know, and I've worked with databases and all of that. But even for me, it was like, oh, you know, and do I really want to learn all of this? You know, I mean, for my little, you know, one person business and uh, no, you know, and and the other nice thing about using using Fathom is I don't need to have my cookie banner turned on. <laughs> that exactly. pesky cookie banner, you know, as a designer, we hate the cookie banner, you know, it's so intrusive and um, yeah. and I don't need to have it, you know, and people do sometimes ask me, Christine, where is your cookie banner? You know, I'm like, hey, look at my footer. I say in there, this is why I don't need it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and you know, so so in your company right now, so how many people are actually there? Is it still a company of one or a small company? Yeah, it's we're four people, um, okay. plus some freelancers and our lawyers, um, and accountant and stuff like that. It's a very small company, and we, it still follows the. T I mean, company one was never meant to be literal. Like you have to have a cop. Never had. Yeah, yeah, I've never had a, but people do get confused with the title. It's just like Tim Ferriss's four hour work week is, <laughs> was never meant to be like, you only work four hours. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it's still 100% is, is guided by the philosophy from the book. My co-founder actually read the book. I didn't make him read the book, but he had read the book before we went into business together. And he kind of um, aligned with that. And with the fact that like, we didn't want to grow to be like we never want to become Google or Google Analytics. Like that's not, yeah. it's not interesting. And it's not the type of business that I want to run. Whereas we can, and it's such a big, and that's the thing too, right? Like the analytics market is basically everybody with a website. So like we don't need, I think Google Analytics is like 85 or 86% of the market. We don't, we can be highly profitable with like 1% yeah. of the market and having a team of four people and still pay ourselves well and still have good margins and all of that. And I think that like, that's enough for our business yeah. to do oh, yes. exceedingly well. Yeah. And, and, you know, you have actually just mentioned a word uh, that um, I also use a lot enough. <laughs> uh, I often say, you know, a, a calm business is, is all about the liberating concept of enough, you know, uh, having enough energy to run our businesses, especially for, you know, introverts and HSPs, you know, and those of us who are not like, you know, um, well, you know, you know, those people, <laughs> you know, who are always in the, in the, in the spotlight and the influencers and all those people. Um, and also, you know, enough time to, to live the kind of life that we want to live and enough money to support that life, you know, because, I mean, the hustle with these like, oh, you know, make, you know, six, seven, you know, eight figures, you know, because I mean, six figures is not even enough anymore these days. And, and inflation is pretty bad. So, yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, right. Um, and um, and it's just relentless, 
you know, and I really feel, you know, you are such a good example, you and your company of, you know, what it's enough, you know, we, it's enough. It allows us to, to run an ethical business and in business that is genuinely helpful to people and it doesn't, uh, you know, keep us up every night, you know, with worry and all of that, you know, and, 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 and we, you know, we earn enough, you know, to leave the kind, lead the kind of lives we want to lead and it's enough. You know, I think we need to talk a lot more about enough. Yeah. <laughs> actually. I mean, we're unabashedly a lifestyle business. Like we optimize, our success is optimizing for the lifestyles of the the four people that are, are the team, right? Where we're not trying to extract value for investors. We don't have, our customers, our investors are the only investors we have. Um, we've never taken any money because we don't want to misalign that. Like we want to do well for our customers and do well for ourselves, pay ourselves a decent salary. And that tends to like that tends to work. Like I don't, it's, it's funny that lifestyle business used to be such a like derogatory term. And like, we, we optimize for that and we're, we're happy to optimize for that. And I think that's what makes us do as well as we do is because if we do that and we're happy, then that translates into um, being able to support our customers really well, to build products for our customers or features in our product for our customers really well. And it has kind of like a, a trickle down effect where we're not trying to um, like answer as many, like our support person, I, like I've never told him like, oh, you have to answer like this many emails a day. It's like answer the emails till you fix the problem that the customer came with you. And then yeah. if we ever get to a point where the list of people that have questions is bigger than you can accomplish, then we'll just hire somebody else or we'll fix Perfect. our documentation or make videos or that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we always kind of try to optimize for that as opposed to I think people, and I mean, obviously that's the, the point of the book, but I mean, I don't think people question um, the growth or more enough times, right? Like yeah. being bigger, isn't necessarily better. Like if we had 10 people, I don't know if that'd be better than a, the four person company yeah. that we have right now. It'd probably be a bit more inefficient because that just happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it's, it, 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 there's definitely an art to staying small, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you have a product uh, that is really good and successful and, um, you know, and that by virtue of that actually does grow, you know, so, um, so I think there's definitely an art to that as well. But, but like you say, you know, I mean, if, you know, I feel like from, you know, being one of your customers, like one of your core values, for instance, is good customer service. You know, so the times that I've had to reach out, uh, I, I had quick answers, good answers, you know, and 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 the problem was solved, you know. So, um, and I feel, you know, I mean, nowadays with all these big companies, honestly, I, you know, like I got locked out of Instagram the other day and I have no idea why. I mean, I don't, I'm not a huge account. I'm not a, I think actually they had a glitch at their end. You know, I was even like verified. I, I was paying for the blue check and all of that. So it was kind of a little like, uh, who do you contact? You know, I mean, I, you know, I mean, thankfully I, I know someone who, who works at uh, Meta you know, and, but even with her help, I still haven't had any answers, you know, and my account was thankfully restored within three hours, but I lost my blue check. I have no idea why, you know, and uh, the whole experience just reminded me, and we all know this, you know, that dealing with these big companies, yes, you know, the free platforms and all of that, where we are just a product, we're just a number to them. If you have, you know, and, and there are people who, you know, we, we hear about this and I've seen it, who have like tons and tons of followers, you know, like hundreds of thousands and they lose their account to them. That is like, like a disaster and mm -hmm. they have no recourse, you know. I mean, what was it the other day that, that like, I don't know, Kim Kardashian or so had to go and do something, you know, <laughs> because Instagram messed up on something. I can't remember all the details, you know, but that is... Uh, but that's kind of the world we live in now, you know, and that's why I feel so strongly that, you know, 
I really want us to shift the focus a little bit, you know, towards, you know, what we're all, all people behind these businesses. I mean, even Meta is made of people, you know, and, um, but small companies, which are really like, you know, I mean, you're, you're in Canada, you know, but, uh, you know, I think in, in North America generally, you know, I mean, we are the backbone of the economy, uh, mm -hmm. the small companies. And, you know, and how do we, you know, um, kind of shift that focus, you know, and, 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 and really, you know, our customers are people. And, you know, so I think, you know, customer service is one of those things, you know, where, yeah, I mean, it's so annoying, like Meta, you don't even know who to contact or other companies, you always get these stupid um, automated phone loops, you know, and just give me a blooming person, you know, <laughs> and um, so, yeah, anyway, so I, I you know, I, I could, I get quite excited when I talk about this. Um, so I, I, you know, but that is why I really, really appreciate Fathom. And um, so, you know, I think you are, you guys are a great example of, you know, how to, um, you know, have a company that values people and sees us as people and um and I'm very happy to pay you know what I think is a very reasonable fee for what I get you know and cool. um and by the way people I'm going to have an affiliate link that I'm going to put in the description <laughs> if you want to check it out and you can also save a bit of money on your first payment uh and um so let us um actually shift a little bit to you know talk a little bit more about you know social media and um uh, this is something i actually put on instagram that i'm interviewing you and uh, a few people and i said hey do you have any questions for paul and you know and one of the questions was um i mean do are you still on social media i mean you yourself not but do you actually use it do you consume it do you no. spend time? You don't, not at all. No, nope. like you don't check zero X or zero. Nope. Zero. Wow, was that a hard transition to make? To yeah, go cause from you're because you're addicted to social media, right? Okay. Like when you're using it, it's the it's set up to keep you using it. Yeah. So to to break out of that almost is like the taking the red pill in the matrix or whatever. Like you really have to <laughs> question your reality and. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah, it was hard. It was hard in the beginning, but I don't. I feel like all, and it isn't even to to diminish what people think, but like, I feel like all of the things that I felt were the most important things when I was on social media became so trivial. Like, I I don't need to know what people's opinions are. I mean, people don't need to know what my opinion is on anything, right? Like, I'm very specific. Oh, I don't know. Ways. I think people valued your opinion. So I wouldn't um, say that. On some on some topics, yeah. But like, I don't need to be on social media talking about like, the Israel Palestine conflict or things like that. And I'm even very specific in because I still have a podcast for now, um, with my co founder, Jack, and we're very specific about not really sharing our opinions about anything other than the, the business that we're running. Right. right. Because I don't think like it doesn't there's no there I don't I don't see any benefit in having a public opinion privately. I have tons of opinions. I love engaging in conversation about difficult topics nice. because I in in private or one on one, there's there's nuance there. And you can come to a like if we disagree, we can still be friends or still have dinner or that kind of thing. Whereas on social media, it's like it devolves to one person calling the other a Nazi like 99% of the time. Oh, and it's like, I, I, I don't I see, know. I don't see a win. Like I don't see any benefit. Trolls. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't miss it. I don't, I don't feel like it's, I think that, I think that social media companies are winning when people think like, Oh, I need to be using social media to be relevant, to be heard, to know what's going on. I think that's a fallacy. And I think we can question that yeah. because I know a lot of people that aren't on social media anymore and their, their lives haven't been ruined. Their, their companies yeah. still are fine. And yeah, I think there's, I think there's ways, because if you think about it, like businesses have existed for thousands and thousands of years yeah. without yeah. before Twitter or Instagram or whatever I know. the thing is now. Um, 
yeah, so there's there's other ways to do it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and you know, and I think, you know, the we we can decide, like we have choices, you know, and like you said, it can be so addictive, you know, and um I still think it can also be positive, you know. I mean, I certainly enjoy um you know, connecting with, I, I do enjoy that. I've made some real life friends, you know, through social media and, mm-hmm. uh, or through blogging, you know, I mean, I used to be a blogger in the old days, you know, and, uh, and, you know, even now, I mean, with Instagram, but again, I keep my Instagram for small. I don't follow that many people myself on Instagram because I cannot handle that, you know, because I keep it manageable for myself, you know, and, um, so, but I still enjoy it as a creative outlet, for instance, you know, I mean, I, because I like photography and um, so, you know, but when I, you know, when my account was closed for a few hours the other day, you know, I, I mean, it wasn't great, you know, I wasn't happy, but actually if it had gone away, I mean, that wouldn't have been the end of the world for me, you know, because mm-hmm. social media isn't one of my main, main, main channels, you know, and main things. And uh so, you know, so I feel, yeah, I mean, for those of us, you know, if we do enjoy a certain level of engagement and, you know, you can make really good connections, you know, and and also like for me, it's how I stay in touch with my family and friends abroad, you know, and, yeah. and, and for that, I mean, that's why I'm on Facebook, you know, I mean, I have no love for Facebook at all, you know, and, but it's the most convenient place, unfortunately, and, and convenience in this case wins, you know, and, but it helps me stay in touch with my cousin and with my, you know, with my aunt who's actually on social media on Facebook, you know, and, and, um, and my brother. And so, you know, but I think you have just, you know, demonstrated and, and, you don't need it. You can have a life without it. Now I have to say, I have to admit for me, I mean, right now, if I like stopped everything from one day to the next, that would be hard. <laughs> oh, hundred um, percent. Yeah. And I, I can't actually, you know, because also my business very much does depend on, you know, online presence and, and doing mm-hmm. things online. I and mean, that's just the nature of my business. Yeah, and I mean, my previous one did as well. And that's why yeah. I was that's why I had like a, a Twitter account and, and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, so, you know, but I, I feel like I'm probably like a hybrid between like, you know, you, you are very private, you know, very introvert and, and therefore, you know, I can totally see, you know, that in the long term that just was not the life you wanted to have, you know? So, and while I'm not like a super duper extrovert either, you know, but I'm, I'm kind of in the middle probably, you know, and so I still do enjoy certain aspects, but I'm also fighting a little bit the addiction, you know, and certainly the noise. It's a very, very noisy place. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm also trying to redefine, you know, what does it mean to have a calm business? You know, how do I reconcile all of this? You know, because as you've just shown, you know, we, we don't need all of this and everything. You know, we really don't. We can do this on our terms. It's absolutely possible. And um, and it's it's interesting also what you said earlier about, you know, like talking about conflicts and all this, because I mean, like the world is on fire, you know. I mean, the world has always been on fire one way or another. But now, of course, we are aware of everything that happens everywhere 24-7 uh, a, a day. And that was actually one of the questions from the audience, you know, how, well, I think we know the answer already, you know, how do you stay calm and positive when the world is on fire? Um, I, I don't think us knowing every detail about what's happening in the world is helpful. Like, I mean, I think that obviously I can get the gist of a thing. I can feel empathy towards people that are, that are hurting, which is, almost everybody at this point but like I also think that like it it kind of comes down to like well if you want to change the world like it's hard to like go and globally affect it right but you can certainly do a ton in your community to make just your little area that you live better right like you can I've, I've been involved in 
in local government stuff for, for a long time. And it can suck because <laughs> uh, yes. it's still, uh, it's, st- it's still bureaucracy, <laughs> however you slice it. But I mean, things like that, but you can, if you, if you niche down, just like with your business, it's hard. Like, I don't know how to go on the internet and reach everybody. Uh, nobody does. Right. But like, I know how to niche down really, really, and, and get a, a like a, a super narrow focus and reach those types of people, which I did in the various businesses that I've run. And I think the same can be said for for what we're talking about here with with um like being happy and 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 that kind of thing. It's like well, you can affect like you can you can actually see changes happen if you niche down enough where you can affect that change, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I can't I can't do anything about the Middle East, like. Yeah. I, I can I can feel bad that people are hurt, but I like I don't know what else I can do for that. But I know that positivity can also like ripple out. Like the more people that are positive in your community, they could share that with other people, and like it can it can kind of spread like that. Um, but yeah, well, I don't it's, it's, I don't know. <laughs> Some days changed, also just suck. <laughs> it's well, it's changed from the inside out, isn't it? You know, and 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 it's it's. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I often and I and I am like one hundred percent on 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 board with all that. You know, that's exactly my philosophy and has always been. You know, that I affect you know the the the, the community where I am. You know, and and I think also if we if we look at how change is how change actually happens. I mean, just look just look at families. Look at families and the conflict you have within a family. And how hard that is, you know, to 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 deal with, and how hard it is to break generational patterns, you know, just in your family. Just imagine how much more difficult that is to even do on a much larger scale. It's it's just not possible, you know. And I mean, I see definitely a lot of movement out there. I think people want change. I think the world wants change. I think people are fed up with wars, people are fed up with, you know, suffering and and all of that. Um, but you're right, you know, I mean, it's it, it doesn't serve to know everything that goes on all the time, every second of the, of the day, it doesn't serve anyone, you know, because we really need to, again, you know, we need to be where we are, you know, and 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 ground ourselves here. And be effective here because the ripple effect is there, you know. Yeah. And 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 I think so many people get so caught up in everything else, and then they just forget about what's here. Yeah, you know. I think that also becomes more evident, or at least it. it so I guess it became more evident for me when I moved from a huge city to a tiny town. Like I live on unincorporated land in the woods on an island. So yeah. I, I do actually know all of my neighbors, all the people that live around here, because like you, you kind of have to living yeah. so remotely. And I, I didn't really, it's harder to see community in, in, in bigger places. It's that, or at least it was for me, whereas in, in smaller communities, it's easier to see like, oh, geez, like community is actually important. You can affect change in a community and that and I don't think everybody needs to move to like a tiny town in the <laughs> middle of nowhere but it just becomes it becomes at yeah. least to me a lot more evident that that kind of thing is beneficial absolutely um, and yeah. you know I mean and we do actually have I mean online there are online communities you know that sure. um you know that I mean I've certainly been part of some online communities where you know we have effective affected each other's you know like lives or businesses and 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 again you know so you know but it's about connecting but like real connections you know and 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 um you know so yeah community is is sorry i just lost my train of thought there i was going to say something else about this and i it just went away um but yeah no i i i think um also, you know, to to find what we, you know, where we can thrive, you know, to, you know, so for some, yes, it is living on an island in the woods, you know, and, and you still impact your small community there. You also actually do impact on a larger scale, too, because you still have an internet business, you know, so actually, there is that impact as well. And mm-hmm. um, so, um 
you know, whereas others, you know, we like to live in a city and, you know, we create communities there as well. And, um, you know, so I, I don't know. I mean, there, there are so many, you know, this is kind of a new world in many ways. You know, the internet has certainly changed many things, you know, and, um, but I feel that, you know, certainly what you do and with your business, you know, it's, it's a really nice example of balance, you know. And so before we finish, because, you know, we could probably keep talking about all of this forever, but I, I wanted to conclude with, you know, like, do you have any like top three tips for entrepreneurs today, you know, for people who maybe have a passion, you know, that they want to turn into an online business, but they know hustle culture is not for them, you know, and but how do they, you know, I mean, I know you haven't, you know, you're not really like online and all this anymore, but I mean, do you still have any tips, you know, based on your, you know, experience, because you do have a lot of experience uh, for, for solopreneurs today? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I got three. <laughs> well, yeah, head, does, but whatever. One yeah. tip, we'll take one. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think, I think question whether or not your passion should be um, a business, right? Yes. Cause like, I think that's important because like I've I've done that. I was a, a a touring musician and a studio musician for a long time, and that like a, a good way to kill your passion is to turn it into a business sometimes. <laughs> and like on, on the flip side, I'm not passionate about website analytics, not at all. Like I I could care less about that as a specific thing, but what I do care about is running a business in a way that works for me. Running my running a business in a way that works for the people who want to trade their hard earned money for a service that I provide. And that kind of thing, I think, is a lot more interesting to me, um, where I don't really, even writing was never really a passion of mine. It was something that I saw that people resonated with, and that was something that I could like generate an income from. But yeah, I think challenging that, because I think that there's aspects of things that you could be passionate about where it's not like the topic, like just because I love hiking, I'm not going to make a hiking business kind of thing like I, I don't think that but you I don't could. think that, that you totally I, could I totally just... could but I think that that would probably harm the, the passion that I have for it but I think there's there's ways to find I think with business like business is really just about finding people who want to give you money for the thing that you're doing and if you can find that then there's ways to be passionate about it. I think I think we all get caught up a lot in this like we have to follow our passion or we have to find yeah. like passion to do our business um I've always kind of approached work as it's just work like if I don't have to work and I mean I think that also like comes to speaks to the the hustle aspect of it it's like I like the work that I do for sure I like that I have my own company I like Fathom specifically but if I don't have to be working I'm not going to be working on Fathom right like I, I'm not going to spend my entire life just on that. I have so many other aspects of life that I like to yeah. explore. And because it's not like the absolute passion that I've had since I was a baby, like starting an <laughs> analytics company, like analytics it isn't, it, company, it's yeah. not, all, it's not all consuming, <laughs> right? So it's not all consuming. Yeah, so it's just yeah. something that I enjoy doing. Like I, I wake up in the morning and start work and I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. And a couple hours later, I'm like, I'm done. And I don't want to yes. Yeah, well, and now I can go enjoy something else. It's it's like what you said earlier. It's a lifestyle business, right? Yeah. You know, and it's it's uh, and I think you know again, it's it's important you know to know what what works for us here, you know, and what is important for us, you know, and and the whole you know passion thing. I mean, like a lot of my life, you know, people said, oh, you should be an interior designer, you know, because I like enjoy interior design. But I never wanted to turn that into business, you know, because I actually knew, no, that would just kill my joy of it. And then I'd have to deal with other people's taste and with, you know, all that. No way, you know. But when I became a web designer, you know, that was actually something, I don't know. I mean, I kind of fell into it, you know. And then I thought, oh, actually, people would pay me money, you know, to do something that I do enjoy. I mean, I love I love web design. But eventually I, I, you know, I ended up teaching, you know, and, um, and something that I've actually also one way or another always done, you know, even in my corporate life, I was often, you know, facilitating workshops and all this. And that's something I genuinely love and enjoy. But it's also, you know, it, it is absolutely a lifestyle decision. You know, I want to have 
a certain lifestyle. And so I find I, I basically mold my business now to fit with that, you know, and like one on one, as much as I like design, but that long term didn't work for me either, because I found that energetically too draining. You know, even though I like I loved my clients, you know, and, and I loved what I was able to do with them. And um, but I, I realized energetically it was too much, you know, so. Mm. So that's how, you know, I ended up doing what I'm doing, you know, and, but I love that, you know, I love that, you know, question, question your passion to start with, you know, and uh, do you, do you really want to do that, you know, and, and, um, and what else is out there, you know, and, um, but also, you know, sometimes, you know, start, try it out, try things, you know, and, and experiment and, mm -hmm. Um, you know, and 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 know what is important to you, and I think you demonstrate that. You know what is important to you, and you ultimately ended up with a business that supports that. Yeah, thanks. Well, thank you so much, Paul. And uh, I think we had lots of other questions, but uh, I I think this was great. I really really appreciate you know your insights and you coming here today. You know that uh, that means a lot. And um, I am going to, well, actually, normally I say I'm going, well, I am going to leave links to Fathom because I normally say I'm going to leave all the social links and everything <laughs> for the person that I just talked to. In this case, we're going to have one link, you know, uh, which cool. is going to be my affiliate link for Fathom. And, awesome. um, and yeah, so thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording now. Hang on a second. Cool. Thank you.